right friends welcome back to lecture part of 38th week this is from 14th to 20th september let us look at the highlights visit of uh, ranil vikramasinghe to india cementing further ties supreme court stays new panchayat law in haryana which uh, specified uh, minimum educational qualification as well as certain other conditions by the state government now the supreme court stays that law ahimsa cannot be forced to say uh, supreme court then west bengal government declassifies netaji files after 70 years now the onus is on the central government to declassify the files lying with the central government if you look at the events around the world nepal accepts a new constitution hindu monarchy is now turned out to be secular federal republic horrific war crimes in sri lanka says uh, united nations uh, report military coup in burkina faso burkina faso is the west african country then malcolm turnbull became the new australian prime minister frequent changes are taking place uh, as far as the head of australian government is concerned across the states if you see assessment of uh, state implementation of business reforms gujarat uh, stands first followed by andhra pradesh then transferring godavari river water to krishna a forerunner towards interlinking of rivers then andhra pradesh on way to realize its potential then economy and banking in principle approval for 10 small finance banks then global innovation index india is a slipping year after year now it is standing at 81st position slipped from 76th last year and we are going to discuss these events one by one in detail Look at the first one Ranil Vikramasinghe decided to visit India as the first country of his foreign tour after becoming the prime minister for the fourth time he was sworn in as the prime minister of Sri Lanka for the fourth time after the just concluded elections and here i would like to tell you four memorandum of understandings or agreements were signed which pertain to sark satellite emergency ambulance service on lines of uh, 108 what we operate in our country then medical equipment to 200 bed hospital in wabunia wabunia is uh, basically tamil dominated region in sri lanka then execution of developmental projects concerning local bodies and non governmental organizations so these are the mous and agreements signed when the prime minister of sri lanka visited the country and more than that it assumes significance because after becoming prime minister for the fourth time he decided to visit india as his first itinerary of foreign nation because this assumed more significance because of the reason during mahinda rajapaksa's time sri lanka tilted slightly towards china and now the sri lankan government is trying to neutralize it and if you look at the issues of india sri lanka first and the foremost is uh, frequent fishermen issue and uh, frequent arrests are made by sri lankan authorities when uh, indian fishermen is uh, going into their waters that is the issue or you can say burning issue for several years but it is being solved amicably some days sometimes they arrest them and again release them second important point is the granting powers to ethnic tamils in northern part and eastern part of sri lanka that is basically implementation of 13th amendment so as to give more uh, powers to the tamil population then the third point is uh, tilt towards china during mahinda rajapaksa's time but now the sri lankan government is uh, trying to neutralize it with the assuming of the presidency by maithripala sirisena right so these three are the basic issues and more than these there is a trust deficit between 
both the countries for several years when Mahindra Rajpaksa's time. And the second important point is Sri Lankan businessmen are fearing. That's why India-Sri Lanka agreement that is comprehensive economic partnership agreement could not take off. So, these are the issues between India and Sri Lanka. Look at the next issue, Supreme Court stays Panjait law in Haryana. What is the necessity of uh, this uh, stopping of this Panchayat law or granting stay on this Panchayat law? Recently, Haryana government imposed minimum educational qualification for contesting in local body elections. If the person belongs to OC category or you can say general category, minimum educational qualification prescribed is 10th class and for uh, men of scheduled cash, Minimum educational qualification is 8th class and similarly, for a woman of scheduled cash, the minimum educational qualification is 5th class. Not only that, for the persons to contest in the elections, they put the some more conditions. One is they should not have any dues in cooperative banks, electricity bills should be paid up and should have a functional toilet at home. So, these restrictions were uh, imposed by Haryana government and subsequently Haryana government has gone for notification for Panchayat elections and the nominations started from 9th September and in this backdrop, the Supreme Court uh, stayed the operation of uh, Haryana Panchayat Raj Amendment Act of 2015 of uh, prescribing minimum educational qualification to contest in the elections to panchayat bodies and please don't forget haryana is the second state after rajasthan for prescribing the minimum educational qualification for panchayat raj bodies that means for contesting in panchayat raj bodies please don't forget and remaining things i have given here please go through them ahimsa cannot be forced says supreme court i would like to tell you the history of the case maharashtra government banned the sale of meat as well as uh, slaughter of animals during the penance period of uh, Jains, popularly known as uh, Paryushan period, that is penance period of Jains and Maharashtra government imposed a ban on sale of meat at the same time, slaughter of animals. Subsequently, Bombay High Court stayed the notification of ban on meat but refused to interfere in the slaughter of animals. Now, the Supreme Court refused to vacate the stay. That means, it supported the order or stay imposed by Bombay High Court. Right? So, the Supreme Court categorically stated in this regard, Ahimsa cannot be forced. Please inculcate the spirit of tolerance within. Compassion is not something that should be reserved only for the festival periods. So, the three comments of Supreme Court assumed significance and let us look at the different types of judgments or different comments given by Supreme Court in such occasions in recent times. I listed the three, four occasions. One is on ban of meat, fish, eggs in Rishikesh while commenting on the ban on meat, fish, eggs in Rishikesh, the Supreme Court commented, majority of the people come to Rishikesh for prayer and purification, hence the ban is justified. That means, the Supreme Court supported the ban at that instance. And in 2008, when the nine-day meat ban was imposed during the Parishan period of Jains, the Supreme Court comments are, 9-day meat ban during Paryushan is a reasonable restriction. 9-day meat ban, at that time the Supreme Court felt it was a reasonable restriction. And now in 2015, on meat ban in Maharashtra, the Supreme Court stated, Ahimsa cannot be forced and compassion is not something that should be reserved only for festival periods. And on some other occasion, the Supreme Court gave judgment and quote, beef is a poor man's protein food, unquote. So, like this, the comments of Supreme Court are at variance 
as far as the judgments in connection with the ban of meat or other animal products is concerned in this country. Just as a snapshot, I have given these, right? Look into the next one. West Bengal declassifies Netaji files after 70 years. Government can keep some files secret. Under the Official Secrets Act, government can keep the files secret. Now, the West Bengal government declassified those files. That means, the secret files were kept in the public domain. What is the meaning of declassification? Previously, these files were secret and now they are kept in public domain. Anyone can view these files now. And after 70 years, West Bengal government declassified these files and these files pertain to 1937 to 1947. And it was believed that Subhash Chandra Bose died in an air crash at uh, Taihoku in Taiwan on 18th August 1945 in an air crash. But there are other controversies and other reports say that he was not died on that date and he lived beyond that period and he lived beyond that period spanning from Russia to China. These are all controversies and these are all unconfirmed reports. And now the declassification of these files assumed significance and not much is evident from these files. And now a CD was handed over to the family members and these files containing 12,744 pages are kept in Kolkata Police Museum and people can access or being accessing these files from 21st September. So, what is evident from these files? Because of the declassification of these files, more suspicion about his death. Second point is family members were snooped upon, right? And many more things will be evident when the central government declassifies the files. Several files are with the central government and shortly the Prime Minister is going to meet the family members of uh, Subhash Chandra Bose and when the center declassifies files then I think there may be some more issues which may come to light about the secrecy of the death of uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. Let us look at the issues around the world. Nepal accepts a new constitution. After seven years of infighting and protests, the constitution was finally accepted and Nepal is moving from Hindu monarchy to secular federation of seven states. Nepal will have seven states. It will be secular and at the same time, it will be federation of seven states which means it will have seven states with legislature for each state. And the constitution acceptance is not without disputes, not without disturbances. So more than 40 people lost their lives when the Madhesi agitation took violent turn in the areas bordering India. And more about the constitution, please listen to news analysis of this week. We discussed in detail about the Nepal constitution. Look into the next issue, horrific war crimes in Sri Lanka says United Nations report. United Nations Human Rights Council recently released the report which says horrific war crimes were committed more by the Sri Lankan forces and to some extent by LTTE and the crimes committed by the Sri Lankan forces include arbitrary arrests, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and targeting Tamils specifically and rape and sexual violence. 
and at the same time atrocities committed by LTTE include the elimination of Muslims and the Sinhalese and the Human Rights Council recommended for hybrid court with the international presence. The Human Rights Council has recommended for establishment of a special court or hybrid court with international presence to try the horrific crimes during the last phase of civil war. Right? And the last phase of civil war ended in the year 2009, which claimed several lives. Right? So, look into the next issue, military coup in Burkina Faso. Before going into the details, I would like to tell you a bit about this country. This is a West African country. What is the meaning of Burkina Faso? The meaning of Burkina Faso is the land of honest men. The meaning of Burkina Faso is the land of honest men. And previously the country's name was Republic of Upper Volta. Please don't forget. Previously, the name of this country is uh, Republic of Upper Volta and the name was uh, changed as uh, Burkina Faso in the year 1984, which means uh, the land of honest men and the capital is uh, Ogadogu and it is a West African country, Mali towards north, Niger to the east uh, and Benin to the southeast, Togo and uh, Ghana to the south as well as uh, Ivory Coast to the southwest. And this country has seen total six coups and it got independence in the year 1960 from France. And in this period, the country has seen total six coups. And I would like to tell you, Blas Kampor ruled the country for 27 years from 1987 to 2014. And as per the emanated news reports, there is uh, some reconciliation between various uh, factions uh, subsequently, right? So, this is about the Burkina Faso. This is the West African country which has seen six uh, coups during the span of uh, 55 years. And at the same time, please don't forget, uh, Blas Campo ruled the country for 27 years. And now, the man behind the coup is uh, his aide, Gilbert Deander, right? There is a reconciliation going on, so I am not going into much detail in this, right? Malcolm Turnbull is the new Australian Prime Minister and if you look into the sequence of events with regard to Australian Prime Ministers, uh, Julia Gillard was the Prime Minister up to 2013 and for a short period, Kevin Rudd was the Prime Minister followed by Tony Abbott and now Malcolm Turnbull. So, frequent changes are taking place uh, in the Prime Ministership of uh, Australia and uh, Tony Abbott, uh, who stepped down as the Prime Minister, fared poorly in recent opinion polls. So, now Malcolm Turnbull became the new Prime Minister of Australia and remaining things I have given in this PPT, please go through it. Now, if you look at across the states. Assessment of State Implementation of Business Reforms Assessment of State Implementation of Business Reforms This is for the first time, you can say, this is the ease of doing business report for states for the first time. All of you are well aware, ease of doing business report given by World Bank for the nations and India stands at 142 out of 189 countries in the year 2015 and same methodology on different platform is now made applicable for various states and based on the reforms undertaken by various states based on various reforms undertaken by various states from january 1 to june 30 this year and as per the agreed methodology this index was calculated there were total 8 points were given for determining the criteria. 
these eight points I have listed here. And the organization involved are World Bank, Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, then CII, FICI and Consulting Group KPMG. So, these organizations were involved and as per the let down guidelines as accepted by the states and based on the reforms undertaken by various states from January 1 to June 30, this index was arrived at. And here, for the first time this was released and the government is going to release every year and World Bank has given technical assistance and let down performance indices. These were assisted by the World Bank and finally this report came out with the World Bank tag. And the first five states, you can see Gujarat is standing at the top position with 71% of score followed by Andhra Pradesh with 70% followed by Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. And there is a comment from various circles that the top six states are ruled by either BJP or its ally Telugu Desham party. Right? Whatever the comments, but these are the scores given by World Bank or you can say DAPP in assistance with World Bank and Gujarat is standing at first position for ease of doing business in the country followed by Andhra Pradesh closely following Gujarat. Right, So, you can look into this uh, where uh, each and every state uh, stands. Tamil Nadu is the major surprise with just 44 percent of score because the industrial climate in Tamil Nadu is quite satisfactory. So, the critics point uh, to this aspect because the first six states are either BJP ruled states or uh, BJP ally Telugu Desham. So, that uh, made scope for several comments. And whatever the comments, this is the final list given by World Bank in ease of doing business in various states across the country. And look at the next one, transferring Godavari river water to Krishna, forerunner towards interlinking of rivers. All of you are well aware about the Polavaram project. Polavaram project is to be developed by the central government as a part of the state reorganization act. State was uh, reorganized, Telangana was uh, formed last year and as part of the State Reorganization Act, Polavaram project is to be completed as uh, a national project and it envisages uh, transfer of uh, Godavari water to Krishna river. But so far, the main dam works are yet to start. But as a stop gap measure, because Polavaram may be delayed, as a stop gap measure, the Andhra Pradesh government undertook a Patisima project. This uh, Patisima project emphasizes transfer of 80 TMC feet of water from Godavari river to Krishna river by utilizing the existing canal of uh, 174 kilometers and uh, 24 pumps will be installed at uh, Godavari river high capacity pumps uh, which will lift water and uh, pour it into the canal and 80 TMC feet will be transferred each year from Godavari to Krishna. So, it is definitely a forerunner to the interlinking of rivers in future, right? So, this is about uh, transfer of water from Godavari to Krishna river undertook by the Andhra Pradesh government and uh, recently the project was inaugurated by the Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu. Right? The next issue, Andhra Pradesh on way to realize its uh, potential. Andhra Pradesh uh, Chief Minister and Chandra Babu Naidu has got lot of charisma when he was uh, Chief Minister of uh, Undivided Andhra Pradesh in the years 1995 to 2004. He enjoyed more clout especially during the second tenure. But uh, two, three incidences in recent times uh, gives a pointer that uh, Andhra Pradesh may regain its uh, potential uh, after the bifurcation. And the first and the foremost is uh, through innovative land pooling scheme for the new capital city Amaravati near Vijayawada. For new capital city Amaravati near Vijayawada, 30,000 acres or more than 30,000 acres uh, were taken by the state government with the innovative scheme of uh, land pooling scheme. This is one of the biggest achievements uh, in the volatile coastal belt of uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, nearing Vijayawada, nearer to Vijayawada. The second important point is uh, even without capital city, capital is yet to be built. But in ease of doing business, the state uh, stood at the second position closely behind Gujarat and that indicates good days are ahead for Andhra Pradesh. 
the third important point is uh, transfer of uh, river water from godavari to krishna as we have discussed and that patisima project was inaugurated by the andhra pradesh chief minister so these three things uh, point to a situation where andhra pradesh chief minister may regain the charisma which he enjoyed a decade back and can andhra pradesh become the jewel on the east coast only time can say but tamil nadu must be closely watching these developments in principle approval for 10 small finance banks we discussed previously for the first time reserve bank of india gave in principle approval for payment banks and please don't forget these are the category of differentiated banks differentiated banks means they will take up only narrow range of operations so they cannot take all the banking operations that's why they are called differentiated banks and for the first time licenses were given for payment banks and now licenses were given for small finance banks and usha torat as an external advisor scrutinized all the applications and finally 10 banks were selected and please don't forget the minimum capital requirement is 100 crores of rupees and rbi gave in principle approval for 10 small finance banks and while giving approval for finance banks rbi kept in mind that the organizations which have rural presence were given the priority that's why out of 10 eight or micro finance institutions right and please don't forget two things this 75% of the loans should go to priority sector lending in the normal banking system only 40% of loans will go to priority sector lending but in this small finance banks 75% of the loans will go to priority sector lending and the second important point is 50% of the total loan portfolio should be up to 25 lakh rupees size and that's why they are called small finance banks please don't forget right look at the last issue of the week india is uh, sliding down in global innovation index this uh, global innovation index is uh, given by world intellectual property organization world intellectual property organization based in geneva this gives every year global innovation index and this year it gave this index in association with the cornell university and inseed and in the global innovation index india stood at the 81st position in the year 2008 india stood at 41st position in the year 2014 india stood at 76th position and now in the year 2015 india's position is 81 and the top 5 are switzerland the united kingdom Sweden the Netherlands and the United States of America and we are slipping in innovation that is the real worry for the country right friends with this let us conclude lecture part and in the news analysis this week you can listen to the controversy with regard to Nepal constitution and change in doctrine from self defense to collective self defense by Japan these two things we deliberated in detail in the news analysis and features program please do listen to news analysis and features have a nice day thank you